Hello everyone. In this video I will show you how to integrate Google Maps into your Flutter app. Google Maps is quite powerful and you can change the presentation, you can add additional information onto the maps. Uh, in this video I will just show you the, the first steps into that. So with that we start with the Google console. So to use Google Maps you need an account with a Google Cloud Platform so that you need to create. You, have, you start with the first project or you create an additional project for what you, what you need the Google Map integration for. And what you then need to do is basically two things. One is you need to activate Google Maps SDK. You see down here a range of APIs. So it's an API you need to activate and then uh, prepare the credentials. So by default it's not activated so you need to add that uh, yourself. I have done that here already. And then it's all about the credentials. So you create a set of credentials here. I already have one. I show you how to create one. Create API keys. That gives you this kind of string that you will need in your app. And once you have that you can also set restrictions which you should be doing. So you can uh, set restrictions on your application and also which APIs you want to use. So for example here I want to use only Maps SDK. And that's it and only for iOS right now. So with that I can use this one, these credentials here only for Maps, only on iOS. For Android I would have to add that manually and there are also additional SDKs not just maps but geolocation, geocoding, a whole range in the geo space that you need to add on explicitly. Now you have to be a bit careful with the key. Uh, if you have that key which is why I will change these keys here later on uh, you can basically charge this to my account uh, when I created the account I have to give them my, my credit card and uh, it's charged by use. Uh, the first 200 US dollar a month or so are free but beyond that can get quite expensive I suppose. So be careful with that. You can also set some uh, thresholds and you will get an email when the threshold is met. So that's really all you need. You need to select the, the APIs you need and uh, prepare the, the key, copy the key. We will need that in VS Code later on. All right, let's jump to VS Code. So here we are in VS Code and first we need to add the um, dependency. We need to add the plugin. So there is a Google Maps Flutter uh, plugin. So I already have that down here, but you just um, Google Maps. Flutter, that one, already have it. Uh, what is done here automatically is then it will um, add, it will add that to my uh, configuration of the project and uh, then I need to do additional configuration myself. So the best way to do that is to look it up in the pop.dev description of the plugin. Let's go there. So under pop.dev Google Maps Flutter is the description of this package and we see here installation. We need to have this dependency managed which is automatically created by uh, VS Code for me. And then we have the, the package that we can use but important we have to check for additional things we need to set for Android as well as for iOS. So I just check here for iOS. Uh, in my version I don't have the appdelegate.h but I have the appdelegate.swift and what I need to add here is the, the import Google Maps uh, let's see where I have that. It's under runner.
runner app delegate.swift so I have added the Google Maps import and what I also have added is this one uh, GMS service provide API key and this here is the key that I got from the Google console so that is basically your your charging key uh, every Google or every API request on the, with this code is charged onto your credit card basically so that's the basic configuration and with that we can jump right into the code so I have prepared a small sample file that or a small sample program that uses uh, a very basic version of the Google Maps. So a couple of imports that I want to highlight. Dart async. Uh, there are a lot of asynchronous calls here in the whole mapping field. You need to call the API to, to the cloud and it takes a while to get that. So this is all asynchronous and that's why you need this package. Geolocator technically has nothing to do with Google Maps. It's just the way to access the GPS on the phone. So that I use to get the location of the device. And then most importantly, import package Google Maps Flutter. That is the one that uh, covers the whole uh, Google Maps Flutter plugin. So with that, here is my app. Uh, everything pretty much straightforward material app orange basic map as a title that's that's it then i have a stateful widget this is all nothing special it really starts getting interesting here so once you have the map on your screen you don't need a controller yet but once you want to do something with that map after an initial uh, setup and rendering you need to have a controller. So the map is controlled by a Google Map controller and you need to store a reference to that controller if you want to make a change to that map, like move to a different coordinate. So we have um, a late, so it will be uh, pulled in here later on, um, the, the reference to the Google Map controller. We have a map center. Uh, everything is handled by a camera position, so that's really the center point of the map as well as a zoom factor. So the, the coordinates, latitude, longitude, uh, that's the very basic camera position, initial camera position. Here my uh, starting one. And then I have two interesting functions. One is update position, one is determine position. Determine position here kind of hidden, it's just accessing the GPS coordinates of the of the phone. So that's really nothing we look into now, but I will use that one in this um, in this program. Update position, it will be triggered by a button. It will use exactly this determined position, access the GPS coordinate with an await, and then it will use this co these coordinates as a new map center create a camera position around this map center with a zoom factor 15. And then it will instruct the controller to move the camera to this new camera position. And then it will store this camera position. And that's really moving to the latest position. That's what update position does. Now on map created, that is how we get the controller of a map. So here on map created and we execute that one once a map is created. So when the, when the initial map is created, we get a reference to the controller and basically we, we store that in this function. And here under the, um, the build function, we see the normal uh, layout of the screen, a scaffold, the app bar, the, the body where we have the map and a floating action button, that's it. Now here you see the, the Google map widget. That is a little bit tricky to, to shape it, to design it. Uh, so I've put it in a stack. Uh, so basically, normally you, often you have a, a column where you have things uh, stacked up from, from top to bottom or you can have a row from, from left to right. 
and stack is several layers on top of each other. That way you can have the map at the bottom and you can put on a text on top of that map. So that's what I'm doing here. I have the, the actual map at the bottom and then I have a text field where I outline the, the coordinates of the center on top of that map. Now, word of warning, the column as well as the row, they don't work too well or the, the Google map doesn't work too well in these uh, stack works. But if you want to include it in a, in a column, you have to use a couple of workarounds. Otherwise, the size of the Google map gets too large, extends beyond the screen and the whole application can crash. So you have to be a bit careful here. Apart from that, Google map, I override the location button enabled with false because I create my own location button down here as a floating action button. Initial camera position is what I use here. And then just keeping the storing the reference to the uh, controller once the map is created. And this is just a label that includes a latitude and longitude. So the floating action button, I use it just to update the position. It reads the GPS coordinates and moves the map to these coordinates. And that's everything I have in this program. One last comment, when you make these changes to the configuration in the runner file, you need to do a hard restart of the, of the simulated phone. I've done that already, so I can now just do a hot restart. And the app starts here with a map in Austria somewhere. These are the default coordinates. And we see here the uh, floating action button. When I press that one, it will uh, read the GPS coordinates and center the map around these. So this is the, the stacked overlay here with the coordinates and it's somewhere in near Cupertino, I guess. And it's set to drive around a freeway drive. So this, this freeway, I assume we're, we're driving on. If I click that button, we, it, it updates to the latest position here. So this is where we move around. So with a button click, um, what happens is it uses update position, goes here, determine position that calls the GPS coordinates, and then uh, tells the controller, instructs the controller to move the camera to the new coordinates. So that is the very basic one. And uh, in the next video, I will show how to add some additional information on top of the uh, map in terms of markers. Thank you for watching.